हे गाइज वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल सी लेजेंड अ शॉर्ट रिकैप इन द प्रीवियस पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस द प्रोसीजर्स फॉर मेन इंजन मॉडल मैन बी एन डब्ल्यू सिक्स एस सिक्सटी एम ई सी एट पॉइंट टू द प्रिकॉशंस टू बी टेकन प्रायर डी कैप जॉब हाउ टू यूज द हाइड्रोलिक जैक्स एंड डिसमेटल द सिलेंडर हेड एंड प्रॉपर टेक्निक्स टू रिमूव द पिस्टन फ्रॉम द लाइनर होप द वीडियो हैज प्रोवाइडेड यू अ क्लियर पिक्चर अबाउट द करेक्ट प्रोसीजर्स टू रिमूव द पिस्टन इन दिस पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो विल डिस्कस द मेजर रीजन्स फॉर ब्रेकेज ऑफ द पिस्टन रिंग्स द मेजरमेंट्स टू बी वेरीफाइड ऑन द पिस्टन कंप्लीट मेंटेनेंस इंस्पेक्शन एंड इंस्टॉलेशन ऑफ द स्टफिंग बॉक्स द सिलेंडर लाइने कैलिब्रेशन and the precautions to be taken prior installing the piston in the liner friends do watch the video carefully as i can assure you this would definitely help you out during the decap job so let's get started later lifting the piston out of the liner Place the piston on the support around one of the openings in the platform. Check the piston is resting on the piston rod flange. The guided overall interval and an expected service life of the piston rings is 16000 operating hours. We had experienced the breakage of top piston ring after just 2000 running hours of the main engine. So to proceed further, first we needed to investigate the cause for these broken piston rings. To proceed with take off the second third and fourth piston ring by means of the ring expander guys if your engine is equipped with two ring expanders the short ring expander is for the uppermost ring later removing of the piston rings carefully clean the piston of all the carbon deposits then clean all the ring grooves The gas tight sealing between the piston rings and the cylinder liner is due to the combustion gas pressure above and behind the piston rings which forces the rings downwards against the bottom of the ring grooves and outwards against the cylinder liner. If the carbon deposits remains in the grooves they may prevent the rings from forming a perfect seal against the floor of the grooves. Once all the ring grooves and the piston are clear of carbon deposits using a template check the burn away on the whole circumference of the piston crown in case the burn away exceeds the values given in the data the piston crown needs to be landed ashore for reconditioning then measure the ring groove height with a caliper gauge in my past experience one of the major cause of piston ring breakage is the worn ring grooves with its maximum height exceeded the limit stated by the makers The reason behind this is the piston rings have an excessive movement in the grooves during each piston stroke. In our case, it was noticed groove number 1 maximum vertical height was 14 mm and exceeding the value of 13.2 mm as stated in the data of the manuals. The accident measurement for the ring groove height was reconfirmed using a new piston ring and a filler gauge. with same results in short the top ring groove had worn beyond limits this is one of the major reasons for breakage of the top ring and the only solution for this problem is to dismantle the piston crown and send to shore for reconditioning friends in this video i want to stick to the main topic of decarbonization hence i'll be coming up with a separate video detailing complete procedures to dismantle the piston crown and skirt from the piston rod So do stay connected with my channel by subscribing it now. One more cause for the piston breakage is the phenomenon known as ring collapse. This occurs due to the continual striking particularly of the top ring against the wear ridges on the cylinder liner TDC area. Here you can clearly visualize the formation of a step at the extreme end of the liner. This ridge is formed particularly in the region where the top piston ring reverses its direction. To get a clear picture, we will take a look at the new spare liner available on board. It can be clearly seen that the top edge 
is clear of such a reach or any kind of step. It is very crucial to grind out the wear ridge on the liner. The makers also recommend to create a circumferential groove by milling or grinding. The groove serves to prevent the build up of the new wear ridge and protect the new top ring from breakage. Leakage of the combustion gases past the piston rings also known as blow by is one of the consequence of the liner being worn beyond its limits. Hence cylinder liner calibration is of great significance. Do calibrate the gauge for liner measurement on a new liner and record the reading on the inner dial. Same being the reference value for the liner diameter. Then shift the measuring tool on the unit and measure the actual wear of the liner in both transverse and horizontal directions. The readings are to be recorded throughout the length of the liner at the measuring points defined in the cylinder condition report from the makers. All the readings on our liner were within the specified wear limits. As I had mentioned earlier, in our case, the top ring groove height on the piston crown had exceeded its limits. The plan was to land the piston crown to shore for reconditioning. So we had to use the spare piston available on board. All the Kawasaki MAN BNW two-stroke engines are equipped with four piston rings made up of cast iron alloy. It is recommended to replace the complete set of piston rings at each piston overall. Fit the new piston ring set with the top mark upwards and alternatively with right and left hand cuts. Do not expand the rings more than necessary. Stretching the ring led to stress and care must be taken not to open the rings more than necessary when installing them on the piston. The uppermost CPR, also known as controlled pressure relief ring, must be mounted with a short ring expander. Once all the rings are in place, ensure the rings are with alternate right and left hand cuts. Position the piston rings such that the ring ends are staggered by approximately 180 degrees. During the overall of a stuffing box, it is a good practice to examine the ceiling and scrapper ring end clearances. I have already uploaded a detailed video on my channel elaborating the step by step procedures to dismantle and assemble back the stuffing box on a piston rod. I would request you to watch the video as it will definitely give you a clear picture of the job. Always align the embossed numbers on the two halves of the stuffing box with its direction in line with the details embossed on the piston rod foot. This will help during the installation of the piston in the correct direction into the cylinder liner. Guys, now it's time to make preparations to assemble back the piston into the unit. First, mount the guide ring in the top of the cylinder liner. Inside the crankcase, turn the crosshead to a position 45 degrees from TDC. The crank web must be pointing towards the exhaust side. Do lubricate the liner with cylinder lubricating oil. The piston should be aligned such that the embossed marking on the piston rod foot is on the fuel pump side. An engineer should be standby inside the crankcase to guide the piston rod foot through the cutout in the stuffing box flange. Coat the newly installed o-rings on the stuffing box with lube oil. Then start lowering the piston. Do lubricate the complete ring pack with cylinder lubricating oil. Adjust the rings with a difference of 180 degrees between the gaps of each ring. Next point is very important. The piston crown have a numbers punched on it, detailing its manufacturing date. These punched numbers must be positioned towards the fuel pump side. In this position, start lowering the piston. Do adjust the guide ring accordingly, such that the three openings in the guide ring can accommodate 
the three claws of the piston lifting tool. Please do operate the engine room overhead crane in a slow down operating mode. Continue lowering the piston, ensuring each ring being smoothly passing the guide ring into the liner. An assistant inside the crankcase should be in continuous communication with the crane operator on a walkie talkie and must carefully guide the piston rod foot through the cutout in the stuffing box flange. Lower the piston until all the rings are seated inside the liner. There is a guide ring on the crosshead which has to enter the center hole in the piston rod foot. Turn the crosshead almost to TDC while checking this guide ring is positioned in the center hole of the piston rod. Ensure the piston rod has full surface contact with the crosshead. Then unscrew and remove the lifting tool. Also remove the guide ring from the cylinder head. Turn down the crosshead so that the complete weight of the piston is on the crosshead. Friends, watch this part carefully. Due to the newly installed o-rings on the stuffing box, the stuffing box sometimes does not get positioned inside the housing and needs to be jacked down to be positioned correctly. For this, using two jack bolts, pull down the stuffing box, taking care the holes in the stuffing box and the stuffing box flange are correctly centered. Once the stuffing box is positioned correctly, tighten the inner screws on the flange and connect the drain pipe. Unscrew and remove the two distance pieces from the piston rod foot. Mount and tighten the piston rod screws. Tighten the screws to the specified top and lock them with locking wire. Mount the piston cleaning ring on the cylinder head in accordance with the scratch mark. Always to install a new cylinder head gasket for every time you dismantle the cylinder head. Check the correct direction for the gasket. Clean all the concerned pipe connection faces and renew all the old o-rings. The cylinder cover along with the exhaust valve is now ready to be landed on the liner. Carefully monitor the movement for the cylinder cover to avoid any obstructions. Position the four jacket cooling water pipes such that they are fitted into the cylinder cover pockets. Confirm the cylinder cover is seated on the liner with no any obstructions. It's time to mount the cylinder cover nuts. So install the nuts and then the spacering and the jacks on the cylinder cover studs. The difference in the procedures to use the jacks during uninstalling the cylinder nuts and installing those back is that this time the jacks should bear firmly against the spacering. Connect the high pressure hoses and raise the hydraulic pressure to 1500 bar. Tighten the nuts at this pressure and then disconnect the jacks. Friends, do connect the jacket cooling water pipe connections first and open the jacket cooling water inlet outlet valves. Purge out all the air from the system. Check for any signs of leakage of the cooling water. Then proceed to put back all the other connections in the reverse order as I had explained in my first part of the video, procedures to remove the piston. Always to open the air supply to the exhaust valve before starting the lube oil pump and turning on the oil supply to the exhaust valve actuator. Reconfirm for any signs of air, loops and fuel leaks. Turn the crankshaft a couple of revolutions with continuous pre-lubrication on. Blow through the engines and then test the engines from the engine control stations and the bridge control stations. In the initial stages, it is very crucial to conduct the running in of the piston rings with the liner. In the next part of the video, I'll describe in detail the changes to be made in the cylinder lubrication settings for the breaking in and running in period of the newly installed piston rings with the liner. Also, I'll be coming up with a video detailing the mistakes usually done during dismantling of the telescopic pipe, piston crown and skirt and elaborate on the correct techniques to avoid such mistakes. So friends, if you really find this video interesting, do hit the like button, 
share the link among your friends and stay tuned with my channel by subscribing it now this is shifya ganesh wishing you all a safe seas and healthy stay on board hope to see you in the next chapter thank you